I want you to take a minute to think about the last thing you ate. What made you decide to eat it? It was likely your hunger, but what was it that caused your hunger in the first place? There are two parts of the hypothalamus in your brain that control hunger, the appetite center and the satiety center. Your appetite is controlled by your two hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is made up of fat cells and decreases your appetite, while ghrelin increases your appetite and helps control your body weight. If you weigh less, your leptin levels will be higher as your body tries to support itself, but if you weigh more, your leptin levels will be lower as your body tries to balance itself out. Once your leptin levels have determined your desire for food, and the food has entered your body, that's where the digestive system really comes into play. The food first travels through the esophagus, and then enters the stomach where it is mixed with gastric juices. This is an example of how homeostasis is maintained. Since the goal of homeostasis is to stabilize your body functions and maintain equilibrium despite constantly changing circumstances, the introduction of food to an originally empty stomach calls for the role of homeostasis to return the body to a normal physical state. As stated before, food intake is regulated by metabolic activity in the hypothalamic neurons, by hormones that signal the need for nutrition to the brain, and other body functions that require homeostatic responses such as low blood glucose levels or malnutrition. This is not only an example of a need for homeostasis in the digestive system, but also a negative feedback loop. When one factor of your body changes, another adjusts to maintain an equilibrium, creating a negative feedback loop. There are several instances where this happens in digestion. If your blood glucose is too low or too high, your eating habits will be impacted. The same goes for if your brain metabolism is too low or too high, it will impact your eating. Back to the food you just ate, it has entered your stomach and the presence of protein has stimulated the secretion of the hormone gastrin, hence gastric acid. This hormone aids in the mobility of the digestive tract to move the food to the duodenum, which then causes the production of secretin. This promotes alkaline secretions from the pancreas, which prevents the food from traveling into the intestine until the acid used to break down the food is neutralized, because otherwise that would be very uncomfortable for you. Once it has entered the intestine, the final hormone that regulates the stages of digestion, called cholecystokinin, is released from the intestinal linings and causes the release of a fat digesting enzyme from the pancreas to process the nutrients in the food and move it to be excreted. Not only is homeostasis essential to all of these processes, but the hormones that do the hard work couldn't be released without it. They come into play as a result of a change in the body's environment in an attempt to stabilize and maintain equilibrium. So whatever you just ate is currently going through a lot because of your digestive system, and know that it's thanks to homeostasis that you're not even realizing it.